Buster Shoe. All right, guys. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the issues that I had at the track. Uh, not so much while I was driving on track, um, but the issues that I had at the end of the night and why the truck didn't want to start, what I did to fix it, and parts that I ordered, new parts that I ordered, and this little guy. We're gonna talk about this little thing that I'm making. That's a map sensor and uh, a little switch. So I'm gonna show you this thing. It'll be pretty cool. And I'll do the whole install on this on a separate video, but I wanna talk about it. All right, so what exactly happened with the truck? So I was in the staging lane, starting to pull forward, going onto the track, and the truck just shut off. So my first thought was, it was the fuel pump relay. Uh, I know I mentioned in the previous video that they, the current was kind of high for the rating on that relay. So I thought maybe that thing melted or just wasn't happy. So that was the first thing I went to check. So we pushed the truck back to where it was, parked, and first thing I checked was the fuel pump relay. It still worked, it was active, working just fine, and wasn't hot, didn't have any like burn marks or melting or anything, it just looked fine. So I'm not even really concerned about the relay anymore after that. Uh, next thing I checked was like the computer. So we hooked the computer up and thing was still scanning. And I say keep saying we because there was a few of us that were there kind of looking at different stuff. So Hunter was there and a couple of his friends were just looking at different junk. Pulled the spark plug wire off and uh, had somebody crank it, it had spark and fuel pumps were running. We verified that by the sound and checked the Schrader valve on the rail and pushed the Schrader valve in and there was no fuel at the rail. So relay was good, computer was good, fuel pumps are running, but wasn't getting fuel to the rail. So at that point we figured that there was a hose that popped off or broke inside of the tank. So called my wife and she just came to pick me up. I left the truck there overnight and then went back in the morning. So I ended up, uh, getting a hold of my dad and he came there with me because I needed somebody to help me lift the bed off. So I know I talked about doing the trap door and I didn't know if I wanted to uh, take the bed off or drop the tank or do the trap door. I didn't feel like I needed a trap door because I wasn't going to be in there very much after that, but I didn't really think in my head, well, what if I'm on the side of the road and need to get in there and I'm by myself and don't have somebody to lift the bed off with. So probably end up gonna probably gonna end up doing the trap door uh, just in case. So we got the bed off and I have a picture of that. Uh, we got the bed off and it only took like 20 minutes. So what ended up what ended up finding was the push lock fitting inside of the tank. So I have the uh, bulkhead going to a dash eight to push lock fitting and the push lock fitting ended up just popping off. So nothing was broken or anything at the time, pushed it back on. I even put a hose clamp on it just for good measure and started it back up and everything was good. So we put the bed back on, I drove like a hundred feet and then it died again. So we pulled the bed back off, went inside and looked at it. And one of the factory lines that actually came with the Walbro pump broke then. So we had one that popped off, hooked that back up and then one hose broke. So pulled the whole pump setup out, replaced that little line with an extra piece that I had, and <clears throat> we got that thing back in, pushed it back on, and started it, ran it for a little bit, and then it died again. So we pulled the sender back out, and what ended up happening that third time was the push lock fitting popped off again. So the push lock, even with the hose clamp on it, still popped off. So I put it back on and really just tightened the piss out of the hose clamp that was on that push lock hose and started it, ran again, and I ended up making it all the way home at that point. So I wasn't very happy with the push lock, needless to say. Uh, I'm actually kind of nervous about it now being on the, the front and rear ends of the main supply line. Uh, but I my thought is that it probably wasn't made for inside the tank. I thought it was going to last longer than one day, but it was kind of soft and squishy and loosened up. I actually found something else now. I actually started uploading this video, canceled it, and now I'm going to re-edit the video, edit this part into it. So I started thinking about it a little bit more and why that would seem like it was running at such high pressure, even though it's only running at 
60 PSI. I started thinking maybe 60 PSI is too high, and I don't think that it is. So I thought about lowering the pressure, but then I thought about this thing. Remember, this was cracked, so I just capped this off basically. So now that this is capped off, this is regulating the pressure very, very high. It's not vacuum referenced at all. So watch what happens when I start the vehicle. So this is this line is 100 PSI. And let's start it and see where it's at. Okay, so I showed you the pressure gauge here that's pressure at the rail, and it's about probably 120, 130 PSI. So the regulator at the back was at four, so that's about four bar. Uh, so it's right around 60 PSI. So it's actually being regulated in two spots. It was pretty good when I had this thing actually vacuum referenced, but now that I took that reference off because it cracked, it's regulating from here to the tank at 60 PSI and it's regulating inside the rail at like 130. So that is why the freaking hoses broke inside the tank. So I wanted to look at that because I was sort of thinking like I was pretty disappointed like I said about those hoses that came with the pumps breaking. I thought that that was just really weird that they would supply a hose that that's weak, that's that weak, that at 60 PSI it's going to break. So it must have been really high pressure. So I wanted to check it actually at the rail and sure enough it's pretty high. So I'm going to go get one of those uh, little vacuum lines and they also make they also make like little caps that you can put in there to bypass that regular, like completely delete it basically. So I may just go with one of those, but uh, that's my issue. So I did order some submersible half inch and submersible three eighths inch to go before the Y. So that's what I'm gonna do to fix that. I'm gonna change that push lock fitting inside the tank to a just regular hose barb. So I got a female dash eight to half inch hose barb fitting and I'm just gonna get rid of the push lock inside the tank. So with the, it's like E85 ethanol compatible, completely submersible, 100% contact uh, fuel injection hose. So it's rated to like 225 PSI and designed for constant contact submerged in ethanol. So if I have any problems with that stuff, that will be quite disappointing. So that's pretty much what happened with that one. So no big issues uh just a couple lines popped off and one of them broke which i thought was kind of weird because it was the one that came with the walbro pump so i wouldn't really wouldn't have expected that one to break but it did it just broke so that's that story so what do we have next so this little thingy here uh hopefully this is going to be kind of cool so this is just a an adjustable pressure switch so this is a normally closed pressure switch and I'm gonna hook it up like this to test this and I actually have my compressor out and kind of got it dialed in a little bit but I made this little jig because I want to be able to put this inside the truck and actually calibrate the map sensor to what this is reading so essentially this is what I'm gonna use for my boost cut or what I'm gonna try to use for my boost cut and I want this to basically kill the ignition when it sees like 16 pounds so it's a one bar map sensor and I'm only want, wanting to go to about, uh, or the one I'm using is a two bar. This one's a one bar. The one I'm using is a two bar, so I'm probably only gonna go to like 14 PSI. So I wanna set this switch to kill the ignition at around 16 PSI. So if I do have my wastegate reference line break, or something like that, and I see a boost spike to 16 for whatever reason, instead of pissing the rods all over the ground, uh, like I did last time, this would shut off the ignition, and by ignition I mean uh, kill the spark plugs. So I don't want it to uh, kill the injectors because it might create a, a, a lean situation if it's just like like a, the injector does like a half cycle and then it tries to fire. It might be lean, leaned out cylinder. So I want to do it to cut off the spark plugs. 
So that's what I'm going to be working on with this thing. Stick around for the next video on that. I'll do a whole video on this thing and we'll see how it works and actually test it. And I want to try to maybe do um, a test with the truck running and see if I can use the compressor to turn up like boost pressure and kill the truck. So we'll see if that works. I already tested this thing and I have it adjusted around to like 18 pounds. But I'll show you that in a complete video. Hopefully this thing will be kind of cool. And the reason I want to do this is because of what I found when I removed the wastegate line, reference line, and I blew the engine before. So kind of the, uh, wanted to see what was going to happen and what can I learn from it. So this is what I learned from it, that it's a catastrophic failure situation because my setup is efficient enough that back pressure is not going to open the wastegate at all so it's not just a high boost situation it's like completely run away catastrophic failure situation and it happens really quick so this is what I'm going to do to try to get around that HP tuners doesn't have a boost cut option function in the in the tune unless it does and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments um, but like a micro squirt has a boost cut and some other uh, tuning programs have a form of boost cut where you hit a certain level of boost and it cuts the engine. So this is my way of doing like a, a mechanical boost cut. So stick around for that. Hopefully it'll work. Just want to give you guys a quick little update and we'll get going on this thing. <laughs> 